Hey everybody, we are back. So, <laughs> what is this? What What is this thing here? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. It's, a, it's an interesting mix of components and it's almost like a sophisticated parts bin bike. But when I say parts bin, I'm not talking about my parts, I'm talking about an OEM manufacturer and what they can do with things that they already have. So, uh, what's up with this? Well, the owner, a friend of mine, Jeff, who is used to really fast bikes, he's had GSXRs, uh, ZX14s, Hayabusa's, he, he knows fast motorcycles. Well, he bought this bike and he'll, he'll be the first to admit it was a it was an impulse buy, spur of the moment, COVID was going on, needed to get out of the house, blah, 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 blah. So he twisted the gas for his very first time. This bike came to me with 134 miles on it, if that tells you how excited he was to continue riding it. And uh, he's like, Brock, it just, it just doesn't have much when you twist the gas. It seems so soft. He's like, it really, I mean, it's sort of a mutt. And uh, I said, all right, well, I'll throw it up on the dyno and see what the lie detector says. And I put it up on the dyno and I said, no, you're 100% correct. It's a mutt. So from then on out, Jeff, the owner, named it Muttley. What's a Muttley? Well, see, I'm dating myself here a little bit. And Jeff's my age, so let me just give you an idea what Muttley is. <laughs> How can we not start this off with a wheezy snicker? That's what that's called. So anyway, what I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to regroup here because I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing my butt off. And then I'm going to tell you what this hodgepodge of parts ends up being and what we think of it right after this. All right. We are still in mystery, mystery bike mode. What is this thing? Well, if you are a Suzuki enthusiast and you follow the brand, you know there's a whole lot of history. So when I say it's a parts bin bike, I need to be really clear. Suzuki has a kick ass parts bin. How they decide to put something together though is really what we're here to talk about. Uh, what you roll off the showroom floor versus what you can expect if you want to extract a little more potential out of it. So to start off, this here, I'm pretty sure that nobody knows what this is because I don't, I don't know where it would have come from. Uh, we're not really worried about that right now. I can tell you this, the frame is actually originated as the 2016 GSXR 1000, which is a great handling bike. And in fact, the frame and the swing arm are GSXR 1000. Now, the seating configuration, as well as surprisingly not the airbox, is out of a GSX, man, I can never remember that. Hold on a second. GSX 1000. I rode one once down at Bike Week, comfortable, I mean nice bike, but I'm a performance enthusiast, quite frankly, it was a little boring, so I jumped on something faster, next chance I got. But that's where things get a little bit different. GSS, GSXS 1000 had the 2009 to 2016 GSXR uh, 1000 motor. Now they're good motors, but they went off to a larger bore, shorter stroke, really compared to like the earlier model GSXRs that a lot of performance enthusiasts, myself included, really didn't ever fall for. Uh, it, was, it was a decent bike, didn't cost much money, but as far as being able to go and outrun by uh, other types of 1000s in its class, it just, it just wasn't there. Well, that's where this thing gets really interesting because even though this has some of the heritage, the engine itself is from the K5 GSXR 1000, which means K5 is the 2005 to 2008 GSXR 
1000 power plant that most everybody, including myself, really loved that engine. And the thing about that engine was, is that it was a longer stroke, so it had more torque, and more torque out of a 1000cc engine is always a good thing. But it had more torque, but it was also extremely strong, bulletproof. And that's why it's the base for a lot of the really fast bikes you see these days, the grudge bikes, the, the turbocharged uh, GSXRs. I know, I, I know for a fact that you can make 750 horsepower out of one of these engines if you try hard enough and they will really haul ass. So, what does that mean? Well, even though Muttley here, and I'm going to go ahead and let the cat out of the bag, put up a stunning 139 horsepower. Now, if you've got bikes that aren't 130 horsepower and you go up to one that's 130, it's going to feel fast. If you're used to bikes making 170, 180, 200 and above, you jump on a 130 horsepower bike and you're like, oh man, so what can you do? Well, the good news is, is that this Suzuki gave us an excellent platform to perform our magic to really extract some big gains out of this bike. And one of the things I, accept, I really like about it, so the GSXR, the 2017 and up GSXR engine, that's a whole different beast. That's a totally re-engineered. That thing is, lives in a world of its own, and it's super badass. This thing brings it back a little bit. And the thing about that is, that means you don't have a lot of the, the really heavy emissions-related and noise-related problems that are a hell for us to get around sometime. This thing's really simple. It's got four injectors instead of eight. It's Euro 4 approved, which unfortunately means they're known for poor drivability, lots of, lots of lean spots in the drivability range. But the good news is, is with only four injectors, it makes it really easy to de-restrict and it also makes it really easy to tune and also economical. These bikes don't cost a lot. So anyway, we're gonna use the power of video <laughs> to let you see what happens when we turn a pile of parts that attach to this, when we attach those parts and see if you get a little bit better understanding of exactly what we're talking about. We'll do that here in a minute. All right, before we get to work, I'm gonna give those in the know just a little bit of a teaser. Have you taken it out yet? We're gonna use a little video magic to make it easier for you. Bam! Video magic, pretty cool, right? <laughs> if you guessed 2020 Suzuki Katana, you were correct. I'll let you see the bike a little bit more and explain how we tried to make it stupid faster. As soon as I get Muttley to be quiet here. Whew. Muttley's a little too much sometimes. All right, let me, uh, let me get this out of the way. Do sort of a walk around. If you look at the Katana from this angle, from the side, the, the retro part really starts to show. The original 1981 Katana was a, was a very distinctive looking bike, originally uh, designed by Hans Muth. Uh, we'll get into the history there a little bit more uh, later, but you can see where they tried to capture the essence of, of the 81 Katana looks wise, but put it in a, a, modern, a modern package that, that really most guys looking for a retro bike like this are going to be really happy. I mean, none of the other retro bikes run worth a damn either. <laughs> so this one probably does better than they do uh, off the showroom floor. But let me, uh, we'll just go through a couple of the items that we added to the bike. Uh, come back over here. So first and foremost, the thing that most people change, we developed a pentacarbon exhaust for it. Now, the Katana, the way it comes, it comes with some really nice carbon fiber look to it. So we chose the, uh, the polished pentacarbon with our gloss actual carbon fiber end cap. It matches the bike really well. I think the silver looks nice. I mean, the, uh, the polish looks nice, for, uh, you know, against the silver background. Of course, a black one would look really nice also. 
Yeah, maybe with a red logo play. I don't know. We can play with all that kind of stuff. Uh, as always, guys, we, we've been super, super busy. So we've got a ton of work into this bike, and I just want to sort of streamline the, the, the major issue, uh, the major parts, and then let you hear what this thing sounds like, and we'll take it for a ride. But before we do that, from a build standpoint, from your standpoint, this is a very economical build, okay? You've got an exhaust, you've got an ECU flash, and a power commander, uh, sprint filter. We did a lot of work in the ECU flash. Uh, it, it looks like it's gonna work very well for this particular bike. And then a power commander, you know, if you're racing, we really like the power commanders because you can switch back and forth from MR12 to pump gas if you want. Makes it easy to add a shifter if you like. Of course, we can add a shifter uh, through our ECU flash also. But anyway, uh, the, the last thing, one of the things I talked about previously was, you know, the, the torque. And there's a lot of different ways to get it. So as we were putting the bike back together, I asked our cameraman to come in so that I could explain a little bit about velocity stack length versus torque output and what happens as far as more torque, more power, moving power, blah, blah, blah. But uh, check that out, and as soon as we get back, I'll, uh, we'll get into the nuts and bolts of what kind of increases we actually got with this bike. All right, guys, while I'm in here doing a little bit of work before we put this thing back together, I wanted to point something out. You take a long stroke motor, you're gonna get more torque, naturally. If you lengthen the intake track, you're going to get even more torque less peak power and if you look at the velocity stack configuration that we've got here on this bike these are some of the longest stock stacks that i've ever seen in a production motorcycle to give you an idea this is a long stack out of a gsxr 0708 and if i put this down here to try and show you the difference i mean we're probably we're probably a solid inch shorter and this is the longer of the two stacks that come in that bike just for reference, I've got some Hayabusa stacks here that are tunable. They're really nice. Uh, Factory Pros sent me these a while back. And the nice thing about these is you can sort of put them in here and then that's the shortest you're gonna get. If you want peak power, if you're going land speed racing, drag racing, whatever. If you're road racing, you can go with a, a little bit, you can get more peak without hurting the, the, uh, the mid range as much. Same deal here. That's about the longest that he offers in that product in the uh, for a Hayabusa. So I'm just using this as an example. None of these increase power. <laughs> they move power. The only way you're going to get an increase is if maybe the hole inside of this is is not a large enough diameter for the engine and you replace it with a larger hole. Okay, now we're actually getting more in, air into the engine. But by changing the tuned length of the stacks you can put the power where you want it and road racing is a little different than, than drag racing land speed like i said and we'll even stagger them some we'll have you know uh shorter on the outside longer on the inside just to try and get the best of both worlds so anyway we could talk about this stuff it's an entire video on its own but since i was in here and i was basically just verifying the fitment of our p08 sprint filter the production version showed up we did have a prototype in there and uh everything fits nice and remember this bike isn't going to get raced but he's putting a sprint filter in anyway why because not only does it help power it's also really easy to clean and maintain and uh, just makes your life a little bit easier so anyway I'll show you exactly what the different lengths of these stacks in this motor versus some other combinations, exactly what they do here in a bit. All right, guys, let's uh, let's just start off here real quick with our base run of Muttley. Uh, I told you it made 139 horsepower. Um, it also made 74.95 foot-pounds of torque. If you look at the power curve, you can see it's climbing, it's climbing, it's climbing, it sort of noses over and falls back down, and 139 is all we can muster. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this bike, you can see the air fuel, at least at wide open throttle, is pretty darn good for a bone stock bike. Now, if you get down here in the lower ranges, you're going to have 14.7 to 1. Uh, like I mentioned, the Euro 4 stuff, typically to pass Euro 4, you've, you've got to really lean things down, and I can tell you, in some of the drivability first, second gears, I mean, we were looking at 16, 17 to one, but that, that's a different story. Now what I've done, you, you <laughs> as always, 
we always have a bunch of testing. See all this? I'm not going to bore you with all this. I tried to streamline it down. We've got our baseline run, and then I've, I, I narrowed it down to uh, the uh, four runs that I thought you would give a damn about as someone looking in to increase the performance of your 2020 Katana. So let's go over here. Uh, the next run I chose. And, and listen, I, I could show you the little gains here, there, here, there. All right, so this is with our pentacarbon exhaust, di uh, the, the P08 air filter. We're not going to do a P0 or an F185 for this particular bike just yet. Uh, if people start really start uh, racing them, we may consider that. But right now, the P08 is fine. And what, for what the owner is going to do, it, it'll be perfect. So we have a P08. And then um, with the stock ECU and just throwing on a power commander and just leaving the dyno jet, the stock exhaust map in there, you can see we jumped from 139 up to 148 and some change. So these days, picking up five horsepower is a lot through the exhaust alone. Uh, to make gains like this is I, I'm stepping back into yesteryear where we could put on a pipe and instantly pick up 10 horsepower and then do more things to get to get more but anyway that that's just with this with throwing the pipe and the air cleaner on the, the air cleaner I mean you're looking at you know a couple horsepower difference between stock so it's going to be very similar if you kept the stock filter just put on the power commander and didn't and didn't have the bike custom mapped well then let's go ahead and add uh our mapping expertise <laughs> and basically what we've got here this is with our the pentacarbon the sprint filter now we put a stage one brock flash in it which took a whole lot of work time and effort that once again i'm not going to bore you with but then we also have uh the the power commander with our full map and you can see here this bike i mean it just look, look at some of these gains i mean oh over stock uh, I mean, what are we looking at? 170 or 100, 107 horsepower versus 123. You come up in here where the stock one's wanting to nose over. Here's 165. Stock's already nosed over to 131. <laughs> These are the kinds of gains that we like to do. And like I said, it really, really wasn't all that. It wasn't that expensive. If you want to do something like uh, and go with our Stage 1F flash now, I apologize. We had a big storm coming through, crappy weather on and off for weeks. So I'm going to pull up a dyno chart here where we took the power commander off the bike and we just did our stage one F flash, which is that same tune inside the ECU. I'm going to pull that up and show you. Uh, I mean, on the dyno, we actually lost a little power, but look, this is where it gets crazy. 20% humidity on one run, 54 on the other. And I've said it a million times, yes, heat does affect things a little bit, but humidity, humidity is really what, what kills stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna come back to that here in a little bit, but for now, uh, let's just go ahead. If you if you do decide, let, let's say you make your mods and you're really close to out running his buddy on his old GSXR or whatever, and you wanna cheat a little bit, Throw some VP MR12 in there, oxygenated fuel. Uh, we do that, we use it for product development because it's also very consistent when we test. So we can make changes, whether it be the filter, changes to the pipe, changes to the flash, whatever. Uh, but let me pull up an MR12 map here, or run, and you can see it, it does exactly what MR12 does. I mean, uh, 173.5, and you know, like I said, we we struggled with conditions back and forth and i don't want to I, I just streamlined them i don't want to confuse you but this is what i want to actually concentrate on so right now we've got the bike back in the configuration that it's going to go back to jeff the power commander's off the bike he said he really doesn't need one so it's got the ecu flash no power commander and the sprint filter pentacarbon with our mapping inside the ecu to put all that together so really you're looking at this dyno chart um, previously, 162. Um, now, before we gave the bike back, because we had put you know 125 dyno runs on it, uh, we changed the oil and filter. I don't know what oil was in there. He says whatever Suzuki had in it when he bought it, he never changed it. So we switched it over. 
instead of using the less than zero, which of course would have made more power. He's just going to be street riding the bike. It's summertime in Ohio. It gets really hot, muggy, and humid. So we went with the 020 Allison and Petron. That's a great summertime combination. We got guys using it in Florida, Texas, where it gets really hot. Uh, so that's what's in it now. So what I want to do is just jump on it, let you hear the bike. It, it's got a really, really, it's got a really nice sound. I always love those GSX, the older GSXRs. They, they, they had a, they had a beefy sound. You put a, you put a pit of carpet on there, and you, you well, you'll see what I mean here in a minute. But what I'm going to do, this is how it was set up previously. We have better weather today, so I'm just going to go ahead and make some runs and see how we can compare to that 162 in better in better conditions as well as with the Allison and Petron. So we're gonna get, we'll get fired up here and go for a ride in a minute. All right, let's see how the kitty purrs now. guys um well i mean it is what it is you know we're at a solid 164 horsepower today 
that's with the map in the ECU. If you paid attention to the Jixilla series, you know that typically we can get more horsepower with the Power Commander because it's just easier for us to fine tune the mapping. But this is really good. I mean, we're splitting hairs when it comes to riding the bike. So uh, one of the things, and I apologize, I'm, we're in sort of a hurry here. I want to get this thing off. I, I have another bike that I got to mess with that I'm getting hounded about. I wanted to get this bike off the dyno, so I didn't have the RPM set up. So we have it set up on the speed scale, but still, peak horsepower is the same. Now, when you measure speed versus RPM, it throws the torque off. Just ignore that torque. But what I'm going to do, I want to pull this back up and show you a little something. Actually, let's close all these. And if I, it just, just to show you a little bit more, and, and when I was talking about the velocity stacks, I said I'd show you the little the difference in the length. So our best run on this bike on MR12, 173.5 horsepower. Um, and we do a lot of bikes, apples to apples, MR12, Power Commander, so forth. Well, what I did, I pulled up a dyno chart from a previous tuning session, and I did a little overlay. So I want you to take a look here. The, the, red, uh, the red line is, is the same line we had up here, 173.5. Well, this and the red line is the is the katana. Um, the blue line is a 2015 GSXR 1000, and this is what I wanted to show you. Um, this katana, even though it might be a little bit down on peak power, now remember, if I want more peak power, I can change the stacks around and make the bike a little bit more like this. But look at this. The gap here from basically idle up until over 10,000 RPM, I mean, this bike's making a bunch more power, 7,000 RPM, you know, we've got 107 versus 120. Torque-wise, 78 foot-pounds of torque before 80, uh, over versus 87 foot-pounds of torque. So that's the fun zone. And on a bike like this, <laughs> that most people buy because they want to be hellions and wheelies and, and do all the stuff that you do on a naked bike. That's exactly where we want this thing to be. We don't want to try and make it something it's not. We're trying to just sort of enhance what's already there. So enough talking, enough dyno runs, finally got some decent weather. I'm going to get my leathers on and go for a ride and see how this thing actually works on the street. Compared to my last ride, which I'm one of those guys, I'm used to riding really, really fast motorcycles. So when I came back with 139, it's like, eh, I like the bike. I like the way it stops and starts and turns and handles. But yeah, come on, do a little something. Well, I mean, look, look, look at the gains that we picked up on this thing. We, we have instantly put power everywhere, and I can't wait to feel it now. But I'll show you that here shortly. All right, let's try this again. So, it is a different day. It is a couple weeks later. All right. There we go. And listen, I'm going to be straight up honest with you guys. After we shot that last scene, I took the bike out for a ride. And we had a couple things wrong. Um... feels better the uh, the chain wasn't properly adjusted so wh whenever I tried to uh, shift well clutchless shift there was so much slop in the chain that I I couldn't get the bike to shift correctly oh there we go and then I decided that most modern sport bikes come with a uh, some type of shifter whether it be an electric shifter or an auto blipper uh, our flash allows the addition of a uh, of a quick shifter plugs right in it's turned on so if you have our Brock's performance flash that matches the sprint filter to the pipe blah 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 blah, blah you also have the ability to just install the shifter and it works out of the box. Now, if you heard there a minute ago, I sort of forgot the shifter was there and I backed off the gas <laughs> and lifted up. So I got pretty long kill time. Let me try something here.
power wheelies and lofting the front end is not something that we were getting much of with the last setup. And also that, that little giggle that you just heard. Was missing so one of the things I decided to do after taking it for the ride I remembered that the uh, you know back when we were running the 0506 GSXRs they had a really tall first gear ratio this bike has that engine in it now I haven't dug into the actual ratios of the transmission but my butt told me that this bike wasn't accelerating as quickly as it could so the simple, easy, fast, inexpensive, and quick way to do that is to drop a tooth on the front sprocket. And basically what that does is, is, is it multiplies the amount of torque to the rear wheel in all the gears. Now, that does come at the expense of reduced high speed. Once again, I haven't actually dug into the gearing on this thing just yet, but as a general rule, Dropping one tooth on the front sprocket at cruising speeds on the interstate, let's say, you're gonna run probably 300 RPM higher at the same speed or so. And then as far as, as peak speeds go, if, if, we, if we multiply the torque to the rear wheel through a gearing change, then we're going to naturally reduce the top speed of the motorcycle assuming that the that the top speed occurs at a specific rpm so on a bike like this it'd be right when the uh you know when the rev limiter the peak rev limiter kicks in how much will it slow down on the dyno i think this bike was topping out with its with its uh, stock gearing at about 165 miles an hour so that would drop that down to maybe 160 but i tell you what <laughs> the bike is much more fun to ride so I'll give up a little bit of, of, of top end speed this bike isn't gonna see a lot of top end speed anyway it's gonna see a lot of uh, hooligan action corners you know fun stuff and I tell you what the, the shifter works real nice Suzuki has, as far as I'm concerned, and I don't want my Kawasaki or BMW friends getting mad at me, but Suzuki has the best gearboxes in motorsports. They always have. They're butter smooth. They're super strong. They don't clunk. They're very positive. So adding a quick shifter to this motorcycle with the gearbox that's in it makes for a much more enjoyable riding experience. Now this is all my opinion. I'm not the owner. Uh, quite frankly, the owner's on his way here right now. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. So my plan is let the owner take this bike for a ride and at the end of his ride, discuss whether or not it's still a mutt. <laughs> and if it's not a mutt, we're going to ceremoniously allow him to cut Muttley off the back of it. If he's still not happy with it, Muttley has to stay. <laughs> All right, I got to go do something real quick. I will see you guys in a minute. I can keep it down if I keep the throttle, uh, if I keep myself out of the throttle real hard. Yeah, she's running just fine. So let's talk about the advantages and or disadvantages of changing your OEM gear ratio. Well, we dropped one tooth on the front. This bike had a 17 tooth front sprocket. Now it has a 16. What's the disadvantage of that? 
Well, you're twisting the chain in a tighter arc, so there is a good chance that your chain is gonna wear out a little bit quicker. New modern chains aren't nearly as bad, but some of the older stuff you definitely had problems with. Now, if we drop it one more tooth down to like a 15, it's gonna wear that chain out in short order. So you just sort of have to balance what you wanna do. We could have done the same thing by adding two teeth or so to the rear sprocket, but from a from a, a cost effective and ease standpoint, I mean a new rear sprocket's gonna cost let's say $75 versus a new front sprocket. I mean you can <laughs> you can get the cheap ones for eight dollars <laughs> generally there, you know, for what we use there in the twenty to thirty dollar range. And and it's it's simple. Now I'm a drag racer, so I was like more wheelbase. That also allows the bike to have a little bit more wheelbase, which I personally like. If you uh, if you're not in that mindset, go ahead and st stuff a couple teeth on the rear on the uh, on the rear sprocket, and you'll get the same thing. It's math, guys. It's 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 math. So it's a it's a nothing but a gear ratio. Math is math. You can change it from the front. You can change it from the back to get your desired result. The only other downside is on some bikes, and especially the more modern bike, the attack angle of the swing arm keeps getting increased. Back in the old days, they were damn near straight, meaning if the axle was 10 inches off the ground, the pivot point would be 10 inches off the ground. Well, these days, if the rear axle is 10 inches off the ground, the pivot point is closer to 14 inches off the ground. So depending on the engine configuration, if you drop one tooth, there's a really good chance that you're gonna have more drag on the top of the chain guard, which, or the, 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 uh, the guide on top of the swing arm, which can actually hurt a little bit of horsepower on the dyno. Once again, we're not setting this bike up to drag race. We're not setting it up to be a dyno queen. We're setting it up to make a smile. And I gotta tell you, it is just so much snappier with that tooth off. I mean, there's really no comparison. It's amazing what one tooth can do. We, we always say one tooth is a lot. Well, one tooth on the rear is a lot. One tooth on the front is a whole lot. So, anyway, enough rambling on about gearing. We're gonna get back over here. We'll talk to the owner about the bike and uh, let him go for a ride and you can see what he thinks versus what I think. Shifter works really nice even at low RPM. I think we've got a really good combination for this bike right now. Very happy with the way this thing is. I have big old giggles. <laughs> which is always a good thing at the end of a project. And we know exactly what it took to get here, so that's a fun part. All right, so what the hell is that? <laughs> I, I have a plan, right? These are the ceremonial clippers. I want you to take Muttley for a ride, and when you come back, it either stays Muttley or okay. Muttley, or Muttley yes. comes off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. <laughs> so this is the first time you've seen it. It is. Right? We've done a couple things. Of course, we put on our pentacarbon exhaust. I had asked you previously, you like the, uh, like the polished version. We went with uh, the gloss uh, carbon fiber end cap. I, th I think it turned out really, yeah. really nice. Yeah, it goes with this. And, and if you look, I mean, the, 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 the plastic carbon and the real carbon, it's, they're really close. That's uh, awesome. Man. Looks real nice. <laughs> you will also notice that the bike is a little lower. We are both vertically challenged a bit. This bike was very, very difficult. And if you look underneath here, we created a special window link for it, but that wasn't even enough. So then we got with our friends at uh, HTP and they gave us another little adapter that helped get it oh, down wow. this far. So. Um, that that's, cool. that's about the only way you could lower this thing. It's very, it's 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 very very specific. It was uh, that is cool. Yeah, and then uh, we went ahead and put on one of our well yet again. We had to make a new adjustable kickstand for it because 
adjustable kickstands to match your adjustable um, lowering link come in handy, right? My God. Uh, what else did we do? It has a sprint filter, of course. I went ahead and went with the P08 because I know you're going to be mostly on the street, maybe a little yeah. track. Um, that works out works out really well. Nice, nice little setup. And then uh, we flashed the ECU. Now, originally, we had flashed it and tuned it with a power commander. The flash from the power commander imported so well into this combination that we went ahead and put it in, took the power commander completely off. So now you've got the flash and tune all in one. And the nice thing about that is, is when we flash it, we can also enable a quick shifter. So you can see we now have uh, a, a quick shifter for the bike. Now we don't, unfortunately, the auto whipper function isn't available in this particular model, but at least you get the clutchless shift. Um, That's awesome. And you think, you know, as far I, I was thinking about it. Now I know I had an 82, original 82 Katana. You yeah, had I had an 82. Matter of fact, you and I met that way. Exactly. Uh, you ran me down because you were mad because you thought you had the only one in Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> I, I and remember. I thought I did too. When was it? Like 84? 84, 84 as far as married. Over 35 years ago. 35 years ago. Yeah. I just keep getting younger every day. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. one of the things I liked about my Katana was it was really innovative for, the, for its time, right? I mean, it had such a unique look that most people either said, wow, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, or what the hell is that? Yeah. And really, there was no in-between, that's <laughs> okay, no, it's either I love it or I hate it. Do you have the same Absolutely. experience? Absolutely. One of the things I like too is that bike, it, it ran really well for, mm -hmm. for the day. Yeah. Um, they put a lot of technology in it. They put a lot of work into the design, you know, the Hans Booth design is yeah. timeless. You're timeless. not going to confuse that bike with anything, right? So when I first saw your bike, I thought, okay, well, it has the heritage, but does it have that that thing that 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 brings us back, the performance? And, and quite frankly, when I first took it for a ride, I'm like, it's nice. It, it's yeah. a nice bike. Yeah. But is it is it exciting like that '82? No. 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 no uh, absolutely not. Uh, I, I find, and that's kind of how we kind of came up with the name Muttley. <laughs> uh, well, you actually did. You said that thing's a mutt. I put it on then, the dyno. This thing's a mutt. Uh, this thing's a mutt. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's soft. You know, it's on throttle, off throttle. It's real soft. Uh, no matter which, how you set it up, it yeah. just it's it soft. It, it really, really soft. Soft is a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of some of the things we can do these days is we can we can put in or take out as much soft as we like. So I went ahead and made some adjustments that we'll we'll just we'll, we'll quit talking about it. Well, the clippers are going to tell the tale. <laughs> I'm going to hold these, <laughs> okay. right? Now listen, you 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 can't. Well, I can't make all these performance increases to this thing if you don't go out and twist the gas and see what you got. I got you. All right. Now, I'm you. not asking you to break speed limit, of course. <laughs> but but uh, Mexico's just right down the road, <laughs> and everybody awesome. knows you go to Mexico to go fast, right? All right, well, let's get you, uh, let's get a helmet on you. We'll get you mic'd up. Great. I look forward and to let it. let you take a ride and let us, let us know what you think. Yeah, I'm excited. I really am. Well, hold <laughs> on. How about this? You haven't even heard it. I haven't even heard it. It's got a great bark to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. got a little bark. Great bark. And you've owned what? Uh, I've owned GSXRs, Katana, Katanas, 1150Es, Hibusa, ZX14s. I've owned basically the gamut. I've owned them all, you know. And uh, this was kind of an impulse buy because I wanted to recapture some of right. that. You yeah. see it, you go, oh man. Oh man, yeah. And uh, it was a little bit of a letdown on the performance side. Well, hopefully, we're we'll, we'll gonna let you keep it. That's you cool. Still keep it. But if he has to stay there, we didn't do our job. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get you suited up. Great, thanks. Oh out. yeah, that inch makes a whole lot of difference. And it'll go down further if you want to make the adjustments. That's that's, that's one thing that's, that's nice. perfect for me. Yeah. And we didn't touch the clutch. It still has a stock slipper clutch, and we didn't put on uh, the radial mount straps. Cause you're not there. Yeah, I'm not gonna. You don't need that stuff. <laughs> an enthusiast, and I
and a lot of you are going to relate to it. You get your bike, it's all stock, you hit the gas, it's like, oh, that's okay. Well, that bike really was set up super soft. I don't know if Suzuki was worried about scaring new riders or what their deal was. Sounds good. Um, but it was really soft. We went ahead and made some adjustments to the throttle, to the fueling, to where that bike is really responsive now. It and all the little, and it, you'll, of course, I rambled about this on my other ride, but um, so much smoother now. It had a lot of uh, flat spots down low that are all gone. So let's see what Jeff says once he gets done with his ride. Shifter is smooth. Oh man, that's nice. Throttle so much better now. Oh yeah, that is nice. Throttle response is right on really like the feel and the shifter is just killer yeah might ought to go to Mexico for that so a friend tells me <laughs> man it's so much smoother than it was throttle response is right on Much better so much better oh this is it's got to be the best katana on the planet right now this is a different katana than what I brought up no doubt about it to sneak up on anyone. Oh, the throttle response is just so much crisper. Wow. Oh. Wow. That's so nice. <laughs> that is so nice. Wow. Do you need them? Oh, I need them. <laughs> <laughs> this is an entirely different bike. Entirely different. That's awesome. Glad you, uh, glad you like it. I thought the exact same thing. I mean, I, I took it out a little bit before you got here, and I was smiling and giggling, and you know, I, I, I give it the old giggle like a schoolgirl, right? I, and I, I was like, oh, look at there. It is in there. We just had to get it out. It's the difference is night and day. I was so disappointed with it when I got it. Mm -hmm. I I just and and guys, that's no reflection on Suzuki. That's no, on, no, no. It was that, a good bike. That, that's good today. Bike. Today, that's what you have to deal with in order to get through emissions and mm -hmm. and uh, you know get through, especially some of the California stuff that just really neuters yeah. the bike up real bad. Yeah, and and it really takes a lot of our as enthusiasts, our enjoyment mm -hmm. out of the motorcycle. So absolutely. Well, I, when I rode it, I'm like, you know, it just it needs to. Even though we have, we we got quite a bit more power through all the way through the RPM range, I went ahead and dropped the tooth on the front sprocket just to give it that okay. little so, bit of snap. I always try. <laughs> right now, so now it makes a little. I'm sense. cheating okay. on you a little bit. You're but cheating hey, on me a little bit. What? So the but the whole idea is make us smile, right? And that one little change, that 
itty bitty change there really made a big difference on this bike because the OEM gear ratio is just so tall. It is tall. It is very tall. And you can feel it. You can feel it with your butt. You can feel it with your butt. You can just the way the whole butt and the throttle response is spot on. You like that? I really like it. It was it was just so soft before. Mm -hmm. Now it's crisp, but it's not jerky. Oh, it's um, I, I don't know. I, I I thought it turned out really really nice. Well, so it's, I, like I said, it was all in there, but we just had to get it out. And, and incredible, <laughs> out, outstanding. I just love the thing, man. Good. Good. Uh, it's got to be the baddest one on the planet right now. Now somebody will beat well, me. <laughs> well, currently you can't even buy it. a lot of the stuff that's on your bike. We don't even have it on our site yet. So they, they might be able to come and catch you, but yeah. it's going to hey. take you a while. You you got you got the fastest one right now. That's for uh, sure. Uh, and while I was in Mexico, I'm, I'm a little bit play with it a little bit. She she you need to get up over the bars. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. If you, if you grab a handful, she lets you know you got a handful. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think of the shifter? I, I've used a lot of shifters, you know, I did a little road racing in my youth, you know, you went the drag strip, I went the road right. race, and I've used shifters, this is one of the, one of the smoothest, the, the timing, nice. you told me about timing, it might be a little long, but for street riding, yeah. it's, it's about where I would set it. And, and I had mentioned previously, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I've always said Suzuki has the best gearboxes oh. out of all of them, so yeah. if you can put a nice shifter with a great gearbox, you get a super smooth super smooth ride. I absolutely had, I, I wouldn't change thing. I, I, <laughs> well, I, good. I'm perfectly content where it's at. Good. Very controllable, you know, on off throttle, even pulling, lagging it down a little bit. I tried to lag it down like fifth gear running 35, 40 miles an hour. She just, mm -hmm. just goes right off. So there was, there was, it a, wouldn't have done that before. No, there was quite a bit of big brother in there saving you from yourself. So we went ahead and made some adjustments there. And then to me, when I'm at wide open throttle, I'm a wide open throttle. Give me my damn wide open Give throttle because I'm trying to go I'm, fast. I'm asking. Yeah, you got <laughs> you you got all that now. Every every year, except neutral. Yeah. Well, some people like that. And then then that thing, you know. Yeah. I'm not that guy, but it's amazing they abuse C six Especially the six hundreds and the three hundreds. Uh, they they really tear them up. So yeah. yeah oh, no more Motley? No more Motley. No right. more Mutley. All right, we, get, we, get, we, get. we are going to just cut you free here, brother. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll go ahead and take this from you. You get to keep Mutley I get to keep Mutley. Souvenir. souvenir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I really do. This this was everything I was hoping and more. It yeah. really, you were always telling me, it's, we're going to do what we can do, we can do what we can do, but you fit this out of the park. Well, and you haven't seen my introduction to this video, but we sort of call it a parts spin bike. Right, but the good news is, is that Suzuki has a phenomenal parts bin. So they put together the right components, the right engine, the right chassis, right suspension. I mean, the bike it handles like you yeah, know, it, it handles like a dream. It's a, it's a great handling it handles. It handles far better than I need. Yeah. Now you yeah. could probably use it because that whole road race thing for a, basically a naked with upright bars. This yeah. handles really, really well. Yeah, I, I thought so too. And uh, so we just needed to get that acceleration out of it and get get some of that uh, you got that some of those other things out of there that were keeping me from my big giggly smile and I, I see you have it so that's good I can't help myself it, it, yeah it, it, part of it you was keeping my, my ambition tampered down which you've done this a long time you know how it goes oh, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah no. you uh, you under promised over delivered on this one so I'm, I'm glad and, you uh, think that couldn't be happy that's yeah. awesome I appreciate you loaning this bike it took longer, you know how it is these days, but was it worth the wait? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's all that really matters. Smiling and happy. <laughs> you act, I think in one of our conversations, you actually talked about maybe getting rid of it. Oh, I think, uh, I think I'll hold on to it for a little longer. Yeah, well, <laughs> go, go have a little fun with your new motorcycle. Oh, absolutely. I, I feel like now I can, you know, I can, I can represent whatever crowd I'm running with. Now, I'm not going to run down the big boys, but... They're going to know I'm around. Sure. <laughs> yes. sure. All right, guys. Well, Jeff, thank you. Thank really you appreciate you owning us the bike. There you go, everybody. So you know how we do it. It may take us a while, but we get it right. And everything that putting the smile on this man's face is available for this motorcycle. If it's not on our website, it will be soon. So until next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then.